for breakfast. Well, if you've been following the show over the past year or so, you would have heard occasionally interviews with uh, students from Unitech who have been taking part in a um, kind of a, yeah, a documentary advertorial about their experiences at Unitech. And uh, it's part of a new and innovative way Unitech has been um, uh, highlighting the various courses there and um, and getting students enthused about um, taking part in further education. Well, it's all culminating in a documentary that is going to be screening on TV3 and uh, TV4. It's called Unitech Change Starts Here, or the... Um, the uh, documentary is called Change Year, and uh, joining me in the Kiwi studio is Vicky Tapuni. He's been on the show before and is one of the um, students uh, featured in the um, documentary. Morning to you, Vicky. Good morning. And, uh, of course, she's been doing photography, and um, her tutor is also in the Kiwi studio as well, Marcus Williams, who uh, has been tutoring her in photography and has been in the in the ads as well. Marcus, welcome to you. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Um, has it been a fun um, process? Has it been a fun thing to be part of for, for, for you, Marcus, first of all? Yeah, it has been. It's been a lot of fun. I mean, obviously, you're busy at work and so on. but uh, Distracting to have those cameras in there? Well, we just, from the start, decided that we would integrate it into what we were doing. So there really weren't that many moments where it was something on top of. It was always just part of. And they were a small crew of four or five, so, and they were pretty professional. Um, and they just wanted to be in there and see what was happening in the class. And, yeah, it was fine. Because it's, it's showing how um, you, Vicky, is, have changed sort of over that year and um, and the, the sort of uh, issues that you've come up against and, and um, problems that you've solved with photography. Um, and, and it followed you right through to, to the end, didn't it, to the to the um, exhibition that you did? Yeah, it did. Um, and uh, and it, was, it was a good journey. It was... I got used to the crew being there, and yeah. in a way, it, it was almost therapeutic because I could like talk to them about my issues, and, yeah. and they were just quietly nodding. It's kind of like yeah. one of those reality shows, eh, where you go away into the booth, yeah, um, kind it of was. The, the Big Brother house <laughs> or something, and, then, and talk to the booth <laughs> about how you feel. Yeah, about they know things. a lot about me. Yeah, <laughs> so it's got a therapeutic, almost like a counselling session, I suppose. Almost. <laughs> so, Marcus, how do you think um, Vicky got on throughout that year? Well, I think that, uh, reflecting on it, I think that the being in the limelight has been a tremendously positive thing for Vicky. I mean, I think that it's provided... Obviously, there are spin-offs from exposure. I mean, anyone who's in public you know, light or in the, in the public has uh, access to, th- to things that you don't have otherwise. But I think, psychologically the impact has been quite significant in terms of her confidence. and yeah. Because this is a thing that I, I've seen over the years, is that students quite often have the skills and lashings of talent, but are very coy and shy and, and, and uh, um, lack the self-confidence to go out and take the work, right. to the point where someone will come and even offer them opportunities and they're too scared to make that really? afterwards. Yeah, I see that quite a lot. I even saw it in Vicky's year. So it's, it's 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 tremendously positive for her, because that's um, I mean that's something almost separate to the course itself, isn't it? That's a life school yeah. that's that's very very separate. You almost yeah. need something running along concurrently to yeah. to build up people's um, esteem in yeah. themselves. Yeah, it's it's a complex one. I mean, I've got a couple of kids there, twelve and fourteen, and I think there's where it starts somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, at the same time, you know, I look at the two of them, one of them's shy and retiring, the other one's outgoing and confident. Um, they're having the same parents, they live in the same place, going to the same schools. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's partly to do with personality. But, of, but once again, opportunity is something that's so important, and I think that's the key here, is opportunity. Yeah. So, Vicky, you've decided to continue further study. Yeah, I've decided to do my Master's. I came to that decision um, at the end of my third year. So it wasn't really something I was looking to doing, but like Marcus said, I just grew in confidence last year, and, and I thought, okay, I'm, I think I might do this. And what's it going to involve? What will you be doing, do you think? Um, it's a Master of Design by Project, so uh, the whole thing is based on developing a proposal, and then you start the Master's once your proposal is accepted, but that takes um, months of, yeah, yeah of doing so yeah it's less class time isn't it it means more out there in the world actually yeah it's one-on-one tutorial with a mentor that you're assigned um and it's through that process that you develop your proposal and um yeah you you're kind of i guess you have to make your own decisions but you have a, a mentor there that helps walk you through that 
Yeah, so it's less class time. I don't even know if we have any class times. I think there's workshops that you can go to, but, um, yeah, it's more of a uh, you just develop your project. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's always interested me um, uh, how people in, in, in educational institutions balance sort of that um, work-life thing um, or... You know, they they're focused on teaching a particular subject, but obviously they're all also very passionate about it and want to continue their own work as well on the side. I mean, Marcus, you you won the first Wallace Art Award Prize for your photography. Um, how do you, how do you find that balance between putting all your effort into teaching students, but also continuing on with your own work? Yeah, it was the first phot- photograph to win the Wallace, and which was eight, 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 it was the eighteenth year, so it had been. 17 years of paintings, and yeah. then, <laughs> or paintings and sculptures. Yeah. So yeah, it was a bit of a coup for photography because photography has uh, certainly in the last century struggled to be, uh, to be seen as, as an art form. But yeah, I mean, to, back to your question, it, it is a juggle. Um, however, f- you know, there's not very many artists make a living out of their work. Mm. Um, it's a, there are some, and some of them make a very good living. Um, but as a general rule, most people have to do something else as well. And you've, you're in the context of all that gear and, and stimulation. And yeah. There, there, are, there, are doubt, there are difficulties. I mean, sometimes you feel at the end of the day that all your ideas and creativity have been you know, given out to all the students and you just collapse at the end of the day. But, you know, it's the same if you're, if you're trying to um, you know, run a freelance business, for example, which is something that photographers quite often do, and be, you know, break into the fine art market as well and be yeah. recognised as, as an art practitioner. So, you know, I mean, there are privileges with that. I mean, the access to the best gear in, in the country. But you've been teaching um, the course for 20 years. Yeah. So you would have seen some pretty amazing technological leaps yeah. in that time. Yeah, phenomenal. I mean, um, you know, photolithography in the, in the graphics industry was just fading out at that time. Film was in full swing. There, there was really no digital cameras that... There, w- there were the, the very beginnings of, of digital cameras, but they were... You know, they took an image that was less than a megabyte. And that would have been like $100,000 to purchase or something (laughs) as well. So it was was very much a film orientated industry. There were half a dozen professional labs in Auckland. Um, Three years ago, the two labs had to merge into one because there just isn't the market in Auckland to sustain laboratory-based photographic processing. Um, and their main printing services for the fine arts industry. Mm. The commercial industry is, is totally digital, um, and you know the files go st- through a whole series of post-production straight to the press, um, and uh, the litho plates are set you know, straight from the files. So, um, yeah, it's just changed radically. So do you, do you hark back for the, for the older days of photography where it was all just film? There's a lot of that about, but not myself. No, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I just enjoy whatever, whatever the, the, pl- the plasticity or flexibility of, of of digital media is amazing, and I love that. Um, but the longevity and the trustworthiness of film yeah. is wonderful, and I love that too. So you know, there are times when I use one and times when I use the other. Vicky, how do you feel about film versus digital? Um, I've only just started now shooting on film, medium format film, and um, I love it. And before coming to Unisec, I had never been in a dark room. I'd never right. shot on film. I was just all digital, and then I experienced it for the first time, and realised that there's a whole—it's a whole different craft and a whole different way of approaching a subject and a whole different shooting style. You suddenly start to take notice of where the light's falling. I mean, you should be doing that in digital, but yeah. you're so used to just pushing the shutter as many times, and you're like, oh, there's something good in there. Fix it in post. <laughs> it's when it's a finite resource, right? You really yeah. start thinking about yeah. it. Yeah, so um, I love film now that I'm engaging with it. Yeah. And, and I mean, everyone now is a photographer, right? They've, you know, they're carrying around um, you know, cameras in their, in their pocket is in the form of uh, phones. So, so is it now more of a challenge than ever for... Um, students of photography to stand out as artists? Vicky? Um, can't really speak for, any, for anybody else, but I think for me, um, I think having a, being able to approach your work, even commercial work, with a strong conceptual base or at least having the skills to be able to um, formulate that, I think gives you an advantage because mm. there's so many amazing photographers out there that have all the technical skills, but 
I think there's only a few that can really develop a strong um, conceptual approach or aesthetic to help back that approach up. So I think for me, that's what I'm really wanting to hone in in terms of my master's. I mean, people have said to me, why are you doing a master's? I'm sure you know everything there is to do about Mm. photography, but it's not really for that. I mean, I'll continue to develop technically over the years, but I think for me, it's about learning how to um, develop creative ideas that no one else is thinking of. Have you found your style? Because sometimes you can look at portfolios and uh, they're all really great photos, but they're all over the place of different things. You know, there's, an, there's a, a picture of a bird there, there's a landscape there, but there's, and you, don't you need to find a particular thing that makes your style different to everyone else? Yeah, I think when I look at other people's work, I see a style, but when I look at my own, I don't know. I hope other people see it. I so, think someone else would have to look at it and yeah. give me that feedback. Well, what do you think, Max? Uh, has Vicky found her style? I think she's in the process of doing yeah. it. I think it takes a long time. Yeah. And um, and that can change, too. I mean, you know, styles can change throughout the years. But if I could have a crack at your previous question mm. about the issue of the ubiquity of the medium yeah. and, you know, how it does... Um, I think that there, in certain areas of the market, it has really been tough on the photographic industry, and it has, um, and in, in a lot of publicity organisations and the publicity dimension of an institution or a corporation, um, people are doing their own photography. If they want a photograph of, you know, the head of the head of uh, human resources for. A, they just go down there with their digital camera and get them stand by the window and take yeah. a photo. Yeah. And as Vicky said, you shoot enough pictures, you're bound to get one that's right. Um, and so that has an impact. But we're, we're, we're uh, in, in the higher end of the industry, in advertising, for example, industrial photography, corporate photography, and so on, there's still a great need for photographers. And there's also digital has, at the other end of it, opened up a whole lot of other possibilities. Because, because of course, as soon as you're looking at an image on a screen, then that image can have sound, and it can have graphics, it can have text, Mm. and it can move, it can slide and fade, and a video can be faded into it and out of it. And so that's opened up a whole lot of opportunity for the entrepreneurial photographer in terms of multimedia, and that's where Vicky's very much placing herself, which I think is a smart move. It's almost like keeping one step ahead, right, of the amateur. That's right. Yeah. In some ways, and, and yeah. keeping those skills really, really sharp. And there's some smart amateurs out yeah. there doing some amazing stuff. You only yeah. have to go on the internet and have a look. Yeah, very true. Well, um, you can find and see uh, Vicky and Marcus in the documentary called Change Year. Now, it's going to be screening on TV3 at 1 p.m. on Sunday, the 1st of April, and on TV4 at 10.30 p.m. on April the 5th as well. So um, it's going to be really interesting to see how the whole thing comes together. Uh, and it's going to be really, really cool. Thank you very much for coming on into the studio and chatting all about it. Cool. Nice to talk. It's now 9.47 here.